أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Well, we are gradually approaching to the auspicious moments of Ramadan. And I hope that with the blessing of Muhammad, the Prophet, and his descendants, Particularly Imam Mahdi, may God hasten his advent. Allah Almighty would look upon us, look upon every believers, every poor people, So that in this very auspicious month, everyone will be blessed. The auspicious month of Ramadan is a month of two things. As Prophet Muhammad has already stated, He, in that very specific quotation, the factors that Prophet Muhammad has talked about and encouraged every one of us to act upon is to be prepare to enjoy the blessings of month of Ramadan and Amir al muminin Ali alayhi salam told Prophet that what are the superior things that we can do in this month of Ramadan Prophet did not mention what he had already mentioned he said something else the word vara here Well, in this very blessing month is self-making to whatever extent we are consider ourselves as good we can be better than what we are now we can elevate the level of our piety in this very auspicious month of Ramadan, we can elevate the level of our piety. And the second thing is, what is obligatory to every one of us, is advertising Islam and advertising Prophet Muhammad's lifestyle the path he was striking for the advertisement for Holy Quran as well these are the two major things that we have to put in our consideration in this very auspicious month wherever we are whoever we are all believers, young, elders, we have to put an effort to channel our efforts regarding this issue. One is advertising what is obligatory. In this supplication of Sabah, which is considered as recommended supplications 
This is considered to be as one of the superior supplications I have ever heard. One of its statements is, I personally recommend young people to read Sabah supplication and if you read, try to just focus on the concept of the supplication. And if you're not aware of the meaning, I will recommend you to ask and search upon the meaning of every statement. And if you do not read the supplication, try to make a determination to read it every day so that you can memorize it. One of the great factor of being successful is reading the supplications. There is a great statement stated in the Sabah supplication. Human being addresses his speech to Allah and says, Oh, Allah Almighty. If you leave me alone, one might commit sins. He might be advised, he might be talked out of it, but he ignores. So, he must be left alone on his own and he is wasting his this world and hereafter and that is what is meant by khazlan in the supplication if you do not help me and leave me on my own, Allah is great and compassionate. As we say in Tashahud in our prayings, we constantly repeat His great status. He says, Oh dear Allah, if you leave me on my own and you deprive me from your help, then who would help me? To fight against our desires and Satan, if you leave me on my own, and considering how treacherous Satan is, I would be devastated. 
روایت داره پیغمبر خدا صلی الله علیه و آله فرمودن ابلیس یه دونه شیطونم با من گذشت لکن نه اون سلم علی میدونه کاری ازش نمیشه چیزی نمیگه It has been asserted in many traditions that there are many Satans around us trying to deviate, deviate us from the right path. There are plenty of traditions regarding this. All kinds of angels, all kinds of Satans, all around us. He says, Oh Allah, if you leave me on my own, considering that dangerous Satan, one on the peak of a mountain might slip, he might have pain, the road might be slippery. If you just leave him alone, he would be devastated, for sure. He would fall down and he would turn into pieces. Here, by the word nasab, it means the, the most painful punishments. Month of Ramazan will pass. Some might have elevated their levels, some might have been deprived from the blessings. Allah is great, Allah is generous, Allah is helpful, but we ourselves, we have to make an effort. In this very supplication and some others, they have been regarded as the Allah's instruments and tools for testing us. If we control our desires, we can be prosperous. Because the desires are much more dangerous than the enemies that accuse us or kill us. Desires torture us every moment. The desires would destroy our hereafter. And Satan, destroys us from outside and desires destroys us from the inside. Allah Almighty has assigned prophets and imams infallible to help us and from inside, wisdom is going to help us. This is Allah blessed us with. Wisdom invites us to accept infallibles and imams and prophets. And prophets talk to us through logic, the logic that Allah has assigned. And on the other part, desires and Satan 
are fighting against us. So this is going to be a great opportunity to control this desire and the Satan to stop the desires from hurting us. This is a perfect opportunity month of Ramadan self-making, standing against desires and Satan. We can make ourselves through just contemplating over the advices reading the supplications so that we can curb the desires and Satan otherwise greater people have already been destroyed by the desires and the Satan Ali ibn Habiyam Zabatali, who he was. He was a scholar. He was a great figure. Ziyad Gandhi, his friend as well. Who was he? He was considered to be as a companion. Muhammad ibn Abi Umayyar as well. They were in the same time. They lived in the same time. It has been stated that Ali ibn Abi Hamza he saved many figures of Bani Umayyads by referring to Imam Sadaq and Imam Sadaq save them all from the depth of misery who devastated this guy this figure desires and the Satan human, human being in this supplication states that do not leave me on my own regarding the Satan and desires but we ourselves have to make an effort consider the example of Abna Abi Umair thousand years past is totally blessed through supplications people sent upon him Ali ibn Abi Hamza Bataini, on the contrary, he after Imam Qasim saved some money, he said that if he thought if he would confess the Imam Reza's Imam, he should give up all his money he has already saved. So he made up a sect. He said I was in I was with the members in Marv. And he was told by members that today in Kufa Ali ibn Abi Hamza Batani died. 
and he is now buried in the grave. Nakir and Munker came, asked him questions. He answered all the questions regarding the Prophet, regarding the first Imam. Uh, he, after naming Imam Musab Najafar, he asked, Who is your Imam? is regarding to someone who knows something but he cannot talk about it due to fear due to being speechless Nakira with a harsh statement said who is your Imam after Imam Musab Jafar he couldn't say the name this tradition has been stated by Imam Reza to Bashar, one of his companions. We take shelter and refuge to Allah Almighty. Imam Reza stated in the tradition. It's now more than 1,200 1, years passed from his death, but he's now he's still shivering in his grave. Why? Because of his desires. The question is, can a scholar be easily and simply deceived by the desires? The answer is yes. Nagma means the tool of sadness. Desires are considered as tools that would devastate us. Such tools that might bring us physical pains or spiritual pains. One might be hit by an instrument and he would be smashed into pieces. Desires are considered as great power, annihilating powers. Dear scholars, no disrespect to you. desires and Satan would deceive us if we do not be careful. Ibn Ami Omer didn't control himself. The question is why? What saved Ibn Abi Omer and what Ali Ibn Hamza into misery? 
Since it has been stated in tradition, I have to mention something here. The tradition related to Bataini. Fire is something abstract. This is not coming to mass. Some have interpreted the power of desires of Satan as a very powerful annihilating tool for humanity. Allah is great and has great powers. He can do whatever he intends to. How? We do not know. And we're not supposed to be aware of whatever he does holy koan is stated surahs and verses about this it has been repeatedly stated in the hadith books that desires of Satan are like burning fires. Can we make a permanent fire forever? No, but Allah can. The desire of Ali ibn Abi Hamza and the Satan who deceived him can deceive everyone. When do we have to reject and stand against them? Month of Ramadan is a great time to do so. Muhammad ibn Abi Umair. He was living at the time of Ali ibn Abi Hamza. Yunus, Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman, you might heard of him. He was friend with Ali ibn Abi Hamza and Ziyad Aqanti. But he used to be the Imam Rizas preacher. He has been offered 10,000 dinars to forget about Imam Rida. It means more than 30 kilograms of gold. 
gold used to be really valuable at that time. He was given one dinar to buy a ship to be slaughtered. He bought the ship, he sold the ship with two dinars. So he brought back a ship and a dinar for the Imam. He was offered 10,000 dinars, but he rejected it. They asked him why, he said, because infallibles said so. People used to deny the Imamat of Imam Reza. This is very surprising, this Ali ibn Abi Hamza in the time of Imam Qasim. He has stated a tradition which has been written in books. He didn't live much after Imam Reza. He passed away in the time of Imam Reza. Ibn Abi Umair was arrested by Aaron, Harun. He was hit 120 times and he, as some people have mentioned, he was put in prison for 17 years, a place that camels are kept. To keep the camels inside, since there were no doors that time, two pieces of wood used to block their ways. These two pieces of wood used to keep the camels inside and by those woods considering how hard they were Ibn Abi Umar he was bitten 120 times why because he has been asked to reveal the names of the special companions of Imam Risa, but he refused. He was tortured, his capitals have been usurped and confiscated, but he did not reveal the names. It's a pity. Satan fights, but Allah assigned our wisdom to stand against this Satan. Desire stop us, but wisdom helps us stand against the wis uh, desires. As traditions, codes, if you close the door, Satan would not come in. And wisdom 
can be a great barrier. May God bless the deceased. Our, my dear father repeatedly stated something which could be really useful for every one of us. If we are good, the blessings of being good can be bestowed upon us. And for the blessings of Imam Javad Waqifiyah has been highlighted. And the most difficult sect was Waqifiyah, which used to stand against Chism. Scholar cannot be simply fooled, but common people are easily deceived. In this very supplication of Sabah regarding Prophet Muhammad, Zahalif is a plural now for Zohluf, which means a path downward, twisted, and a slippery. This is what is meant by Zohluf. And this slippery way is quite common for scholars. It's really hard to be a Nabi Omer. It requires great effort and determination. What would have we done if we were Ibn Abi Umair? It's a pity. This month of Ramadan is a great opportunity to purify our souls. It is stated in the tradition that, that the one who regrets much is the one that his students and his audience have acted better than himself. They are saved by his speech, but he himself cannot be saved. All, everything is optional. Nothing is obligatory, but we have to make an effort. Our manners, we have to consider that. Our, my dear father said, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say, just contemplate over it for a moment. 
to see that what you are going to say, what you are going to do would hurt anyone that you might have to answer back in the resurrection day. If it does not hurt anyone, do it, say it. But if you cannot, if you are not sure that it, this would not harm anyone, avoid doing that, avoid saying that. I have repeatedly used this strategy in my life. One might get angry. We have to curb our anger. A sexual desire might dominate us. We have to control it. Poverty might put a heavy pressure on us. Miseries might also as well, enemies as well. But the mo most major reasons are the desires and the Satan and the month of Ramadan is a great opportunity to stand against these two especially for every one of us. Search upon the tradition books, Holy Quran, whatever the infallible Imams have stated. There were so... It requires effort. Quran stated, only through effort you can be purified. So, praying and patience. It's a pity that month of Ramazan passed and you would not get the blessing out of it. Try to think about it from now on. If someone has wronged you, if someone has accused you, if someone lied to you, just contemplate over what is good and what is bad. What is better? These issues would elevate us. These issues would pave the way for us to be purified and prosperous. Do not be ignorant. It's everyone's duty. It's an obligatory precaution, an act. We have to pave the way so that we would not commit any sin, so that it would not ignore any obligatory acts. You might have heard that this tradition that a scholar passed away he, w he had to be punished with fire for once he said I cannot bear that he said, why do you want to punish me? You ha they said, you have done two terrible things. You intentionally ignored saying your morning prayer one day. So he was punished once for that ignorance. 
Allah's system is not something haphazard. Allah is the most compassionate and most merciful. But He would punish severely. One can be Ibn Ami Umair or one can be Ziyad Ghandi. One can be Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman. The one who for simply forgot about more than 30 kilograms of gold. We have to make an effort. Unfortunately, it's quite common in Islamic countries regarding all these tradition books, scholars, advices and advertisements. They're not all to be blamed. Some scholars might be ignorant. One of the scholar came to me last year after he told me why did I reach the reality and truth after 75 years why I couldn't reach to the reality when I was young. Who is to be blamed? It means that he himself was ignorant. I talked to the some of the Abu Zer's story to him. I talked, I told him that he died out of starvation for being loyal to Ali ibn Abi Talib. And you have to be tolerant as well. He said, Everyone, everything was taken from me. Why did he reach the reality after 75 years? Because he was ignorant. Who is to be blamed? Surely there are some people to be blamed. I hope that you are not. We have to advertise Amir al Mu'minin. It's a perfect and holy month, it's a great opportunity. Long ago, we were not free to advertise for Amir al Mu'minin. We did not have enough equipment, but today we have enough facilities to do so. Shias, non Shias, young, old, women, men, university students, scholars, workers, clerics, businessmen, poor people. The technology we have is something that we have to advertise to Amir al Mu'minin. Through this device, our smartphones, a satellite, we can advertise Imam Ali. Satellites, not all access to it, but 
the smartphones we have, we can use it to advertise Imam Ali Long ago, someone, a non-Muslim came to me from a foreign country talking about, asking some questions about Ali, Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib. I answered some of his questions. I talked to him for a while. A translator and interpreter translated what I told him. I told him I would bring up some of the examples of how Imam Ali, how great Imam Ali was, and but you can search upon it. Even infidels have written books about the greatness, greatness of Imam Ali. He was not only a figure, he had a great status. He used to be Prophet's soul. Ali Ali Salam ruled for five years. I talked about him, about this narration. Middle East was ruled by Imam Ali, depth of Africa, Europe, they were all ruled by Ali alayhi salam. Considering the plenty of enemies he had, the Jamal War, Nahravan War, Safin as well, see who waged those wars. But we cannot find any political punishment through the history of Imam Ali salam. We cannot find any political prisoner in his government. No political refuge. But he had many enemies. Many fought against Amir al Mu'minin, but he did not put anyone in prison for political issues. But no one escaped from the fear of Imam Ali. If we do not send in refugees to other countries, this is because of Imam Ali. Two years later, 1,400 1, years pass after the Imam Ali's martyrdom. Considering how many enemies Imam Ali had, he didn't have any refugee. This is considered to be as Imam Ali's blessing, but enemies considered it as a bad thing. They said that Imam Ali could not be a great leader because he was good tempered. That they said that a leader should be bad temper. Imam Ali did not sell any piece of land to anyone. He did not sell any piece of land to anyone.
The land that does not have any owner the owner of land who does not have any owner is either Allah or the one who can expand it by farming or expanding it. Governors cannot be the owners of the lands. No one can usurp a piece of land so that others cannot use it from. No one died from starvation in the time of Imam Ali's government. Considering the greatness of Imam Ali's territory. Considering the transportation, no one must be died from starvation. No one died from starvation because business was free by Imam Ali. He told Malik Ashtar not to do anything, not to interfere with people's business. Just be careful that no one harm any other. And I asked the translator, can you find any government today? like Ali's government. Why we should not learn from his government and his system? I'm addressing my speech to non-Islamic countries, those who claim to have freedom and perfect economy. Learn from Imam Ali alayhi salam. We have to let whole word in this month of Ramadan. We cannot say that all have to be blamed, but we ourselves must try so that we cannot be blamed later. And this month of Ramadan is a great chance. You, dear scholars, everyone must advertise Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali alayhi salam is now more oppressed than his time in the past. Today we can defend Imam Ali. In the past we couldn't. In the time of many Amirat, in the time of many Abbas, it was difficult to defend the path of Imam Ali. What Imam Ali says is exactly what Quran says. Imam Ali is the true example of authenticity and right. Imam Ali is equal with all the authentic religious rulings. His 
علي بن ابي طالب يعني عقائد علي بن ابي طالب يعني اخلاق this should be advertised and that this can be done the cell phones we have the smartphones we have we have to advertise Imam Ali through our technological devices. Wherever you are, you are responsible to advertise Imam Ali as much as you are able to. وقتی که بهش میرسه باور میکنه قرآن فرموده است البلاغ المبین بلاغ یعنی برسه مبین یعنی آشکار یعنی واضح You should not just say that Islam is the most authentic religion You have to prepare him You have to Use your skills so that he would be truly aware of the perfectness of Islam. Imam Ali built his government in a way that he did not push anyone to do any obligatory act. Zakat is something obligatory. He, Imam Ali used to send someone to collect the zakat. He told him not to force anyone to pay his zakat. Don't you think that this Islam is beautiful? You cannot find this example anywhere. Consider the fact that if you do not pay your tax in Western countries, you would be severely punished. You cannot find any example that Ali alayhi salam would force anyone to pay the zakat. Have you ever seen any Jewish forcing anyone to pay the zakat? The scholars are now taking the, um, the path made by Ali alayhi salam. This is beautiful. And I told that foreigner that you would not find any example like that. They have to be told. Why he has not been aware of these statements? Because he has not been told. You dear young boys and girls can let Western people, Western countries know about the virtues of Imam Ali. Unfortunately, in some Islamic countries, the word La 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 has been misused and black flags. The ISIS members are now defaming the true image of Islam. What is our responsibility? Show people 
what has been written in our tradition books. This is an obligatory act we have to act upon. We can start it from the month of Ramadan. Both self-making and advertisement. May God give us the chance to do so by the blessing of Prophet Muhammad. May God bless Muhammad and his pure descendants.